YouTube viewers and random Ghostbusters fans. This is the Transformers Ectotron. A mashup of the Ecto-1 and the Transformer. It converts from the Ghostbusters right of choice to a Ghostbuster in its own right, complete with Proton Pack. But is this just a mere gimmick, or is it a worthy addition to your Ghostbusters or Transformers collection? Well, let's take a closer look. The packaging is designed in the classic 80s Transformers style, with a nice big logo across the top, with transforming instructions along the top panel. The window display is good, but obscures the back half of the car with a large image of the character in robot mode. The back offers some awesome artwork of the Autobots at war with the Decepticons, with some blurb at the top, and an awesome cutout and cape stat card near the bottom. And you can pause the video if you want to read any of this. So that does it for the packaging. Let's open it up and take a look at the toy itself. And so here we have the Ecto-1. And if you're in any way at all familiar with this franchise, you'll already know the minute details of this car inside and out. For me, I tend to judge how good Transformers toys are by how well they disguise their transformation feature. And for the most part, this is pretty good. There are a few noticeable splits across the hood and along the back, but aside from those, it's a nicely detailed replica of the Ecto-1. The front grille is very nicely detailed with the two circular headlights at each side, with the iconic license plate at the bottom, and still silver badge at the top. The overall shape of the hood has been recreated well with the silver fins running along each side, while you can even spot wipers at the bottom of the windshield, the blue emergency light at the side, and the rear view mirrors which are present on each side. All four wheels feature the white wall tires and tread sculpting, and the silver detailing on the hubs. The doors are clearly defined with window struts and handles, and a No Ghost logo has been printed on each of the front doors. The red fins don't run along the doors, but are very precisely detailed at the back, with red tail lights looking very sharp, but the fins do lack paint apps here and there. The back door lacks the no-go symbol, as well as a license plate, but the grille along the side of the door has been included as well as a handle and the rear silver bumper. Moving to the top, you can spot this wire which is thicker and more of a yellowish brown than seen on the actual car. This leads to the roof, where the blue light bars are visible alongside the smaller blue spotlights. The gadgetry on the roof rack has been recreated well and features some recognisable gizmos from the Ecto-1, but the detail overall is a little bit basic. On one side we get the ladder, while the opposite side features the blue piping as well as an oversized Neutrona wand, which I'm kind of really liking and I wouldn't mind seeing attached to the actual car, but as it stands it is inaccurate. Finally, the back features the second light bar and another set of blue lights. The underside does look quite uh, Transformers-esque, with the limbs and the chest plate visible, plus more of the internals can be seen through the transparent plastic windows around the car. So overall for detail, it looks great for the most part, aside from a few small nerdy nitpicks. The car mode may be one thing. But how does it stack up as a Transformer? Let's switch over to robot mode and find out. So here we have the Ectotron in all its glory. I'm not going to show the transformation process itself, but rest assured it is very easy and straightforward. However, I have no idea where the ladder goes once it's been transformed. The robot stands very tall as is the case with most Transformers. The longer the vehicle, the taller the robot, and the Ecto-1 is a very long car. Its design is very big and blocky, which fits in well with the designs of classic Transformers from the 1980s. The head is a bit basic, but it's saved by these awesome black Ecto goggles over the eyes, and I like how the front of the Ecto-1 has been reconstituted as these almost shoulder pads on the tops of the arms. The body of the figure is mostly white, but I do like that they've used this light tan colour on certain sections to resemble the flight suits of the actual Ghostbusters. This is also reflected in the design around the waist, mimicking the belts, and there's even a name tag which reads Ectotron across the chest. The hands have been painted black to portray the black gloves worn as part of the Ghostbuster uniform, while the lower legs and feet have been given a black coating to represent the boots. The lower legs are certainly the clunkiest part of its design, with the rear of the car still clearly visible along with the fins, but the thickness makes for a very sturdy and supportive base. The back looks Looks great, however, with the two side doors split in half and raised up over the windows, making it very neat. So for detail on the robot mode, it has some great parts, however it is a little clunky in places, but that just makes it fit in so well with the 80s versions of the toys. 
The articulation is pretty good throughout, with the head able to twist and a multitude of joints on the arms and legs, allowing the figure to be put in some excellent dynamic poses when it's on display. Flipping across to accessories, what Ghostbuster is complete without their Proton Pack? I love that this looks like the classic pack, but has been made using the roof rack and components seen around the car, with the blue tubing used to connect the pack to the wand. Speaking of which, as awesome as it was to have an oversized drawer connected to the side of the rack and car mode, I do wish this was able to be stored inside the car when it is transformed. The pack tabs onto the back of the figure, while the thrower can be unpegged and attached to the figure's hand, where it's held very securely. This just sets the figure off perfectly, as it can be posed in mid-busting action while on display. Finally, a second accessory is a Slimer figure, which contains some excellent sculpting work with no paint apps, and a translucent soft body giving him a fantastic otherworldly look while remaining very toyetic and almost comes across as a modern day version of a ghost accessory that used to come with the real Ghostbusters figures back in the day. And finally, doing a brief size comparison, the Ectotron is one of the smallest Ecto-1s in my collection, with even the Lego version being slightly bigger than it. Meanwhile, in robot mode, the Ectotron fits in well with some of the regular figures from various Transformers waves. So overall, what do I think of this toy? And I've drafted in not only the owner of this toy, but also the owner of followingthenerd.com, Mr. Mark Savage. Hi, thank you very much, Saxon. Hi, 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 welcome. <laughs> uh, so what made you want to buy this? What's the appeal? That's awesome. Uh, okay, fair enough. Thanks for watching. Yes, yes, true. <laughs> no, do you know what? Right, it's firstly you and I are both big Transformers and Ghostbusters fans. True, yeah. So it ticks those boxes. Indeed, it does. Yeah. And I just love the idea that it's, you know, as a Ghostbusters fan, we know Optimus Prime doesn't exist in the world of Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. But these are toys that, to me, feel like they're properly made for playing. You know, you imagine being a kid and you've got your RGB figures, and you've got Optimus Prime, and you've got, you know. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. Ah, it's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's the toy box. It's like emptying yeah. out the toy box on the living room carpet. Yeah. Just going nuts, yeah. Like, I've seen Transformers doing different genres over the years as well. Like, Star Wars was another big one. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wasn't a fan of them. No. Because for me, I was just kind of like, it's not supposed to mix. But yeah. for some reason, I actually like this. Yes, so because do I. Because one, it's, it's a vehicle, it's an Ecto-1, but also when it transforms, it's a Ghostbuster. I know. It even has a proton pack. I know. Beautifully disguised as the roof rack on the Ecto-1 as well. Yeah, and look, I remember as a kid imagining that like the A-Team van was a Transformer, yeah. Knight Rider was a Transformer, was Transformer and DeLorean was a yeah, yeah. You know, and now, that, and I have a feeling this could be the start of a wave of iconic vehicles as yes, Transformers. Yes, please. Can you imagine Kit transforming into Michael Knight? I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, David Hasselhoff. But the Hoff is Kit. What? The Hoff is Kit. No, he's not. He is. How is he? He transforms into Kit. I know he does. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, oh, it, and the big truck that he drives up into? Yeah, that's Optimus, Optimus Prime. Prime. There you go. That makes sense. There you go. Do there it. You go. But Do no, it. I have a funny feeling we'll see more of these. 100%, yeah. Um, another reason why I absolutely love this too is because of the IDW comics at the moment. Because they're doing yeah. their big Transformers crossover. They are. So to me, I know this sounds mental, but in my crazy little mind, th suddenly that makes sense. Yeah. This is okay now. Yeah. This this isn't like Star Wars where uh, the TIE fighter like transforms into Darth Vader. Yeah. Like th this this oh, actually I kind of forgot about those. Remember, remember them? Yeah. And like, yeah. what, like there was like a ship that transformed into Darth Maul and everything. And wasn't the Millennium Falcon two robots? I, possibly. I, think I it don't was know. Two robots, but uh, yeah. But for some reason, like I never liked those. They were big. They were clunky. They yeah. just they didn't look right. Whereas with this, looks awesome as a transformer yeah and when it's in the acto one mode it actually looks like the acto one it's not vehicle. blocky it's not there's not like obvious pieces like that. yeah maybe the 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 neutrona wand like yeah, clipped to the but, side of the roof rack but yeah, you know yeah. let that go it looks class can i say one thing that i absolutely love about this no you cannot thank you the packaging <laughs> The packaging is great especially this it's, if you can see this yeah proper old school it's right out of packaging. the 80s, isn't yeah, it? It's, like it's, it's real G1 art, which I think is just class. Because it actually looks like... Do you remember the old Transformers advert where the kid had the eyes that glowed green? Yeah. Do you remember in the background where it was like, Transformers? I always wanted to talk the sets. Remember the buildings, the awesome buildings yeah. and ro roads and, and all that? And like the uh, like the, the sandy mountains and everything yeah. where you saw Optimus Prime come through the middle. I wanted those more than the toys. Yeah. <laughs> No, you wanted the toys, but you wanted to play with the, the toys play with on the playset, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, I love, and do you know what I love about this box art? They actually are the toys. 
Yeah. Like, do you remember the cartoons? There used to be like, like, you know, like Ratchet and and you know, didn't look anything like their cartoon counterparts, but the box art was like, oh, I'm just going to paint the toy as a robot. Yeah. Brilliant. Loved it. But yeah, the arts class. No, it's fantastic. It's a nice little throwback. It's great for Transformers fans. It's great for Ghostbusters fans. If you're a fan of both, be prepared to lose your mind. Yeah, no, I think it's class. It's really, really wonderful. So I think that'll do it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining me and for letting me review this. As always, my pleasure. It costs millions of pounds. It's incredibly rare, for shame, uh, and I couldn't get my hands on one. Yeah, well, go, go, you go find that toy. You go find that toy. You go find that you toy. You go find that toy. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, comment, support us on Patreon, do all the things that you do, and go to www.followingthenerd.com because yes, that's where you get all your geeky news and reviews and podcasts and, and all that stuff that's awesome. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>